Alright guys, Epic Fucking Slayers here and welcome back to another Division video. Today I have for you the most comprehensive PvP guide on YouTube and I really hope you guys enjoy this one. If you do, please like the video below and subscribe if you're new. Turn on notifications and share with everyone you know. And with that said, let's get into the guide. So let's start from number one and let's start with player type. Now, really what I'm saying by this is what type of player are you? If you're like me, I'm very much a DPS player, I'm very much in your face with an SMG, running around you, hit firing, and really just being an annoying prick. But of course there are other players who like to sit in the back of the map, or maybe at mid-range with an AR, and you really need to decide what sort of player are you. Are you going to be in the face of your enemy, or are you going to be at the back of the map? Now what I tend to do on new games, or any games actually that I, I play PvP in, is I tend to go into some area where I can test out my shot effectively in the division we have the firing range so i'd really recommend going down to the firing range and taking some shots with an assault rifle for example um, at the long range targets and just seeing how good your aim is at the end of the day there's no point in using an assault rifle at medium range if you can't use an assault rifle at medium range now my shot on the division isn't particularly good <laughs> and that's why I normally run straight at my enemy with a SMG. Uh, something like the AUG, for example, which has got very good recoil um, and I can control. That's very good for me. Or I use like an MP7 or something to get really in their face. But for you guys, really, you just want to go and test out sort of what's your favorite weapon um, and sort of what type of player you're going to be. Because at the end of the day, if you don't know what type of player you're going to be, then you're really not going to do well in PvP. Following on from player type, I think it's a good idea to decide what weapon you are going to be using and for what particular build you're running. But really, ultimately, what's your favourite weapon? What weapon are you using? Because at the end of the day, the weapon will decide on how you as a player are, whether you are, as, as I said on point number one, in the face or if you're at long range. For example, if you like running an MP7, then you're definitely going to be in the, in the face of the enemies and that will decide what gear you're using and what sort of player you are. Um, if you are using, say, something like an M700 Carbon Sniper, then of course you're a sniper and there's particular gear sets that run with that, and that's the player that you are. If you are an assault player and you want to run, say, medium to short range, then that's the player you are, and there are weapons for that, like the Lightweight M4 or the Lover C. You need to decide what your favourite weapon is or which one you can handle the best. For me personally, as I said in point number one, I really struggle with certain assault rifles. I can handle an M M4 and I can handle a Lover, but really I'd have to run, say, two strikers with that to give me the extra stability. Um, really, I'm more of an SMG player. I'm right in the face, and that's the type of player I am anyway, but also the gun for me, it, it, it helps a lot to have something like a, an MP5 or an MP7 or an AUG or even a Vector, something which is a little bit more stable and in the face. So you guys need to decide what your favorite weapon is. Just go and test them all out in the firing range, test them out on low level NPCs and just see, you know, am I gonna be running an M700 Carbon Sniper or am I gonna be running, say, a Lover C or actually, am I gonna be running an MP7? It's up to you guys, of course, but your favorite weapon will determine what sort of player you are and then, point number three, what gear you should be using. So as we naturally progress on to number three, I think the next point is very important and that is the gear that you are going to be using in the division. Um, I will say this, there's not really much of a skill gap in the division. There is a slight one, but it's not like other shooter games, for example. So really gear is important and you need to decide, look, what player am I? You know, what gun am I using? And that should be able to decide for you what what you know what build you're gonna be running. If you are running, say for example, like me, an MP7 and you're you're a player type, you're a rusher, you like running on enemies, then you might want to run for something like that has high firearms, or you want to run something that's got a lot of DPS, a lot of damage, something like a Hexo build, for example, which is high firearms, high electronics, and you'll get very high damage, quick damage numbers. Because ultimately with those, you're not getting the best survivability that you could get, but you are putting out a lot of damage, or even just running a high-end build with Skull Gloves, where you're getting even more damage than you would get from, say, a Hexo build, but your survivability isn't quite there. You guys need to decide what gear you're gonna be running, what sort of player you are. If you are a skilled player, someone who likes to, say, for example, use a turret, pull it in a position, and mount players, then from there you're gonna decide, look, what gear am I gonna be using for this particular situation, or this, this, you know, if I'm in the dark zone, for example, and there's a group of four players, maybe I'll just want to put a flame turret down and get them all on fire so my group can attack them. Then, you know, you need to decide what gear you're going to be using. You're going to be running two tacticians, three firecrests. Of course, in 1.7, that will change. You'll be able to add more stuff. But for right now, that's the decision you need to make. So with those three, you know, player type, look, I'm a rusher, so I run with an MP7 in their face and I like to do a lot of damage. 
I'm probably going to be using a high-end build with Skull Gloves because that gives a lot of damage. Of course, other builds that you can run with, for example, you could run three Predators, three Banshee, which would also give you high numbers. But again, you look at the gear and decide, look, is that gear for me? I don't know. It's up to you guys, of course. It depends on your player type and the weapon you're using. That is really, really important in this game. You need to decide what gear, weapon, and what player type you're using before you've got any real chance of understanding how to be good in PvP in this game. And let's be honest, you don't have to be really good at PvP in this game. You really just need to know what gear you're using and when to use it. Moving on, I will briefly mention gear talents. Now, of course, if you're running gear sets, then they already have their you know set bonuses, which I won't go too far into, but... Gear talents on high-end build, for example, are really, really important. That's what makes the high-end build, those gear talents like re rejuvenated or rapid chest piece or if you're running short bow knee pads or skulls gloves or um, specialized backpack or nimble holster. So there's so many different talents in this game. And, I mean, it kind of does go on to gear, like pieces like two pieces three pieces four pieces you know if you're running say for example a uh, let's look at a striker build four piece striker build then you're really going to be running with something that's got good accuracy especially if you're playing on console where the aiming is a lot harder than say for example on pc i mean on pc you could probably run something like a lightweight m4 no problem and you could run striker and get your stacks up easy but on console that's not easy. Um, so you're probably going to run something like an Org, for example, um, or maybe actually something a bit quicker, something that will get your stacks up a bit quicker. You could use an MP7, definitely could use something like that. If you're running a stability build as well, you could perhaps run a Bullfrog and still get those. It's up to you, really. But I think talents are important. So if you're picking gear, if you're picking gear and you think, oh, do you know what, I'm going to go three-piece Predators, three-piece Banshee, that's a great gear set. Or two-piece Predators, um, you know, four-piece Banshee, that's great in the Dark Zone. Absolutely, because a four-piece Banshee is amazing in the Dark Zone. But three-piece uh, Predators, three-piece Banshee, what am I going to be getting with that? Well, I'm going to be getting that 8% Assault Rifle and SMG damage, um, which is amazing. I'm going to be getting that 10% damage out of covers, but I'm also going to be getting 10% reload speed from Predators. So it's not just looking at what the third talent is, it's looking at the second talent and the fourth talent, depending on what gear you're using. And talents are really important, guys. You really need to understand that if you don't already. They are what make or break sets. If you're running a high-end build especially, that's really important. For example, on a mask, am I going to be running Rejuvenate, which gives me that 30% extra heal when I'm in the last segment? Or am I going to take a chance? Am I going to run Tenacious, giving me that extra 10% damage when I when I drop a med kit? Personally, I'm a DPS player. I normally run Tenacious because I think you know that extra 10%, no one is expecting you to pop a heal, then turn around and absolutely melt them. The last thing what people will do is if they've got you on the ropes and you pop a heal, they will go for you. And the last thing they were going to expect is for you to turn around and melt them, which is what you can do with Tenacious. But with that said, rejuvenated in the last segment, if you pop a heal, you get the extra 30%. That's a massive difference, guys. So it's up to you, really, as a player. You need to understand the talents, gear talents, and decide for, you, for yourself, you know, what talents am I going to be using with this gear? Because that will make a massive difference in this game. I think now that we've talked about gear talents, it's only fair that we talk about weapon talents in this game, which, again, are unbelievably important. Weapon talents are more important than the base damage you get on your weapon. Absolutely. For, say for example, a high-end build with Skulls Gloves and an MP7, sorry I always go back to that, but that's my main PvP build, then there are probably three or four talents that you definitely want in PvP. You're gonna want Deadly, because that gives you an extra 50% crit damage, which synergizes well with the crit chats you get off SMGs. You're gonna want something like Unforgiving, which again is very, very good, and you probably want that in the third slot because of the stam requirement. And you're going to probably want something like Responsive, which gives you that extra 10% damage to targets when you're within 10 meters. So that's massive difference. That is, that's giving you what? 10% extra damage, 50% extra crit damage, and then also with Unforgiven, when you are taking damage, you're actually going to be doing more damage. And you get that's crazy numbers. That's like the, the three best sort of PvP talents in the game. I would say they're probably the three best in the game if you're not running a skill build. Now, if you're running a skill build, you might want to run something like... Uh, if on a, on, say, for example, on SMG, you might want to run something like Competent, uh, maybe Unforgiven and Deadly, or you probably want to run something like Competent, Deadly and Responsive. Again, that would be massive. If you're running an Assault Rifle at this present time, you're probably going to run Adept and stack that up with a nice, if you've got like 50% skill haste, stack the Adept up to get that crit chance really high, like an SMG, and then you're going to want something like Responsive, and again, you're going to want Deadly if you're running with Adept, because those two synergize really, really well. And there are certain talents in this game that are useless, absolutely, and there are some that are that are just really, really good. Of course, I've mentioned a few that are amazing, and there are obviously a lot more. Um, 
what I will say is you guys need to test them out. Uh, test them out in the firing, test them out against NPCs, see what they do for you. But I will just say that PvP wise, deadly, responsive, unforgiving, uh, competent, very, very good. They're probably the best adept. Fierce is also very good, especially on an assault rifle. But with that said, you probably want to run adept instead of fierce. So, you know, that's again, that's something you'd need to look into. But weapon talents are very important and they make the difference. If you're running, say, for example, uh, an M4 that's got 24k base damage. But it's got shocking um, talents like vicious and just some other really crap, ferocious, then some other really crap talents for PvP. Or you've got, for example, an M4. This is in the dark zone, by the way. It's got 22k, but you've got deadly, you've got responsive, and you've got unforgiving. Then, you know, that one is better. Although it's got less base damage, the talents alone make up for that. No doubt about it. So, talents are the first thing you should be looking at on a weapon. And then, secondly, you need to be looking at the base damage. So, moving on, let's talk about team. And solo. So of course you're going to play differently depending on whether you're in a team or you're playing on your own. Now me personally I'm always playing solo and I have a lot of experience of playing solo and not so much with teams so I will make team very minimal and try and expand a little bit on the solo side of things. So with a team it's pretty obvious if you're in a team of four people then you're probably on at least two healers and two DPS players. I think that's I could be wrong about that maybe one healer three DPS but I think two healers two DPS is really important um, you want something like an immunizer box because people will throw fire grenades and shot grenades. They'll do all that to stop you. Um, and I think what's really important about being team PvP is you need to do your bit for the team. And what, what I mean by that is if, for example, you've got four DPS players, well, two of those have to be healers. So two of you, even though you're probably used to doing DPS, are going to have to take the role of a healer. And that's just the way it is. Otherwise, if you go into Dark Zone, for example, with four DPS players, you're going to get melted by a team that run two healers, two DPS, if they're coordinated. Because you just won't be able to kill them. And uh, if they're running a skill build, then you're going to die, unfortunately. So you really need to decide as a team, like, what's our roles in this game? Who's the best DPS player that we have out of our four members? Because two of those need to be DPS and two of those need to be healers. I mean, you can vary up. You can even have three healers, one DPS. But I think that's a bit too much heal. You won't be doing enough damage at that point. And I think if you only have one healer and three DPS, that could still that could definitely possibly work. Especially if the healer is very, very good and you know they've got a very good build and they're very good at actually playing the game. Then that could definitely work and you could probably see a lot of fucking meltage in the dark zone with that. So that's kind of my input with Team 1. I know it's a little bit shallow, but I don't know too much about the whole team mechanics that well. So if you guys can sort of comment below what needs to be added as part of a team, that would be most helpful. And now moving on to Solo, um, I mean, it depends on what activity you're going into, but if you go into the Dark Zone, then you need to be aware that the chances are you come across one player, they're not going to be on their own. Uh, they're likely to be with a team, and you really need to factor that in. I think going in the Dark Zone, the best build you can run is a Hexo build, which is a high-end build with exotics, and it needs to be running pretty good electronics and very good firearms. I think you need a mixture of both to give you that sort of that survivability, but also give you that damage, because ultimately in the Dark Zone, survivability is really important. But with that said, if you are on your own, no matter what build you're running, and you're in the Dark Zone and there's four players on you, you're going to die. You might take one, you might even take two, but the way the Division plays at the moment, you're going to die. Unfortunately, it's not the way it used to be, where you could take on four players on your own, if you were good enough. You will die. Um, and that's just the way it is, unfortunately, guys. If you're in last time, for example, playing solo, then really, you can use any build. Really, you can use any build you want, as long as you play... <laughs> I know you're going in solo, but as long as you play as a team, and you stick with other members of your team, um, then you really can play any build. As long as it's not a crap build, as long as it does either DPS or it's a healer or you know it's a tank build, which aren't really viable at the moment, they might be in the future, then really you can run anything. But as a solo player, you need to decide on a lot of things. Um, a, you know, where am I going to? If you're playing last time, for example, you know where where can I go where if I am attacked by two players I can easily retreat to my team so I see a lot of players and I did a video recently about this a lot of players play in the last time solo they go off on their own they get killed a thousand times the team loses and then they wonder why well probably because you're running off on your own mate and you're not actually helping your team out and I'm guilty of this myself absolutely I don't capture points in last time I put my hands up but what I do do is I kill players and the reason why I kill or how I kill players is I always know where the rest of my team is. So if I do get rushed by two or three players, then I can normally back up with my team 
and at least at that point the chances of me dying are cut minimum and we may be able to take out two or three people so i think as a solo player you've got that responsibility that if you do run off then you really need to know where your team is and you need to come back most solo players will go off and they'll die and then they'll spawn back in and they'll die with no one around them being able to pick them up i mean at the end of the day if you're if you if you get killed and there's no one around you to pick you up there's a reason for that and that's because you're nowhere near your team <laughs> unfortunately so yeah i think as a solo player it's a lot harder and it's really hard to play in the dark zone as a solo player but if you factor in all the points i've set up till now uh, i.e what player you are what gear you're using what weapon you're using what talents you're using and know how they all work together that's really important knowing how all your gear talents come together how all your weapon talents come together then as a solo player you can do some serious serious damage in both last stand and the dark zone now another important point that i want to point out here is that no, no matter what you play in last stand or dark zone it's very important to know the map and what i mean by that is if you are in dark zone then i would just take some time just to run around the map and try and not memorize but at least play it a lot play it whatever you're doing whether it's last stand or or you know dark zone you need to know the maps and you need to play them a lot to understand where to go the difference between you surviving in the dark zone compared to someone else could be that you know you know the map better than that person that absolutely happens all the time especially for me in the dark zone if i go in the dark zone i don't know it too well even though i've played it a lot because my memory sucks and i will get out of play just purely because the other person knows the map better than me now within last stand that's not quite the case because i've played a lot of last stand and i know it very well and the reason why I win a lot of battles in last time is simply because I know the map and I know people. And I know where they're going to spawn, I know where they're going to run to, and that gives me an advantage. If I know where players are going, then that gives me an advantage because I know where I can be to take them out. And that's really, really important, guys. If you're doing any of those activities, PvP activities, then you and this is the same for any game you play. You need to know the maps inside fucking out. And if you do and you know where players are going, then you are going to have a massive advantage that other players just won't have. So, before we finish here, I will briefly touch on movement. And it's quite of a general term for, for, for how this game, or how you play as a character in this game. But I think I better bring it up, because I'm sure people will say, well, actually, I move better than this player, that makes me a better player. And that's true, movement is kind of important in this game. Um, for example... If you come up to, against someone with a shield build, the defense build, then you need to move around them and you need to get behind them. Because if you don't, they're going to beat you. If you're one-on-one if -on -one against a shield, you're going to die. Unless you get to the side of them or around them, you can even do that by hit firing or whatever method, uh, method you want to do. But movement's really, really important. Um, there's a couple of talents in this game that require good movement and it gives you a bonus damage. I uh, can't remember the name of them, but... Movement is really, really important. Knowing where players are going to be and they're moving in position to take them out is important. And even in 1v1 battles, you can't stand still and shoot someone because if you do, you're going to die. You have to move side to side, roll, whatever you're going to do, you have to be good at movement. And I think movement, a lot of the times in PvP battles, are what makes a difference. Because most people in Dark Zone or even Last Stand run similar builds, or at least they know the builds that they're running. But movement is what makes the player, and of course their shot uh, and again that will depend on what weapon you're using because if someone's using an m4 with a you know with a skill build but they've got an amazing shot and you're running say a high-end build they're probably going to beat you um if their movement's in place um and that's just the way it is movement is really really important but i don't think it's so important in this game because the skill gap is minimal um and i think as long as you um hit the player you're gonna win every battle almost you can stand still and still win loads of battles. I've done it plenty of times. You don't have to walk around in fucking circles, which a lot of people do. And that really fucking frustrates me. I think the movement speed in this game is far too quick. Um, and I think you can do movement that just doesn't make any sense sometimes. But there's some players that I watch called, for example, like Marco Style and Wids, for example, who clearly has just amazing movement. And it's the reason why they win a lot of their battles, along, along with the fact that their builds are good and they've got an amazing shot. But movement is all part of that, all part of that process. And the only way to get better at movement is to play against people. I see a lot of people wanting to know how to get good at PvP. Play it. A lot of people will jump in for one game. Oh, I'm crap. Well, yeah, you are crap. You've played one game. You need to play it a lot. <laughs> you need to play it a lot. Otherwise, you're not going to be any good at it. It's the same with anything in life, really. You need to attack it and repeat. You need to keep repeating it and repeating it and repeating it. Practice, practice, practice. And eventually, you'll get good at it. 
you might be just an amazing player and get good at it straight away, but most people will take some time before they get used to it. And movement will come in that. You might start off by doing a certain move and think, well, actually, that don't really work. I'll try something else and I'll move here and there and whatever. And everything combined will make you a PvP player, or a good or a bad one. It doesn't matter. But ultimately, practice makes fucking perfect. And it's, it will be the same for anything in your life. So the same with this game. You need to play the game a lot. Don't expect to be good straight away. You need to play it a lot. Take everything that I've told you in this video and apply it to your PvP game. And I guarantee you, just like me, you'll get me getting 50 plus games. 50 kill plus games in the last time. You'll be going in the dark zone on manhunts on your own. Which I will be doing a video on shortly, so I hope you do enjoy that one. But um, yeah, you'll be going in the dark zone on your own. Absolutely. It's This game hasn't got a massive skill gap. But if you do know some simple stuff like this, for example, then you are going to beat anyone. I can promise you that. So just one more quick thing, and I think this is important. A lot of the time people don't go in their settings and adjust, say, the uh, dead, I think it's the dead zone analog size, or the dead analog size, I can't remember what it's called, or any of their settings. People don't go in and change their settings. Now, for me, it's important. Like, for example, I don't have vibration on my controller when I'm playing PvP, and the reason why is because when my controller vibrates, it does take your shot off a little bit. It really does. So if you have a controller that vibrates when you're shooting, turn it off. I promise you it'll make a massive difference to your shot. Also, go in there and have a look at the settings. Because a lot of them will change how fast you aim in, um, how fast you move side to side. And that's massive. For me, I can't have the settings that they personally have. I actually have my own settings that I tailor to me. And the only way i found that out is by just testing each one out. So you guys need to do the same. That's really, again, that's really important. If you feel like you're aiming far too slow, then change your settings so that you can aim a bit faster. Um, eventually, what normally happens is you start pretty slow, you get faster and faster and faster until eventually you're aiming so fast that players just can't keep up with you. You're snapping onto players just like that because they can't keep up with you because you, you've progressed through. There's no point in starting off low, going really high and going, whoa, I can't handle that. Well, yeah, it's, it's progression. It's the same with anything. And again, what I said before is progression. It's keep doing it and doing it and doing it and up in the ante and up in the ante. And eventually your aim will get better and better and better. We'll be able to snap on. So guys, just as I said, this is a brief point. Go in the settings, test out loads of different settings. Turn off vibration if you have it on. And that will make a massive difference to your game. So there you go, guys. Hope you did enjoy this one. If you did, please like and subscribe. It really does support me. I'm sure a lot of you guys will agree with me and I'm sure a lot of you will not. Whatever the case may be, please leave your comments in the comment section below. Constructive criticism is really important to me. If there's any way that you feel that I, I'm definitely wrong on something, then I want to hear about it. If there's anything wrong with my video that you guys feel I need to be better, then I really want you guys to let me know. I'm trying to improve the quality of my videos to the best that I can. I've added my face cam here, as you can see. A lot of people were really surprised about what I looked like. I had some people saying they thought I was blonde, um, which I don't know how from a voice you can... Anyway, I had a lot of people say they thought it was black, uh, which again, I don't know how, my, I, I'm pretty sure my voice doesn't sound like that. Uh, I had two people actually say they thought I was a massive guy with long hair and tattoos. It's really strange how from someone's voice, you just immediately just assume you have this picture of them in your head. And I've got that for a few people, but you've got this picture of them and you see them, they look, always look nothing like how you thought. And it's really weird that it turns out like that. But anyway, going off on a tangent, thank you very much. And until next time, peace.